friends, in this video I'll be teaching you about friction and I'll be explaining the various concepts you need to understand to be able to um, solve questions on friction, alright? So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now, click the like button and also comment on this video, alright? So let's get started. So now, we are looking at the topic friction and the first thing that comes to our mind is what is friction, alright? So what is friction? The first thing we need to know about friction is that friction is a force. Friction is what? Friction is a force. Now there are two other things we need to know about friction. And that is where friction acts and what friction does. Where friction acts and what friction does. So now, where does friction act? Now, let's say we have two objects. Let me use my hands to illustrate this. One object and the second object. And we have their surfaces in contact with each other. Alright, we have their what? Their surfaces in contact with each other. Where friction is going to act here, it's going to act in between the what? Two surfaces of this two objects in contact with each other. It's going to act where in between the surfaces of this, um, the two surfaces of these objects in contact with each other. So now what does friction do? What does friction do? Now, where we have the two surfaces of two objects in contact with each other, and one object is trying to move over the other, or is already in motion over the other object. What friction is going to do is that friction is going to oppose this motion. Friction is going to what? to oppose the motion of one object over the other. That's what friction does. Friction works against what? Friction works against the motion of one object over the other. So now we've seen that friction is a force and we've seen where it acts and what it does. So now putting these three things together we get the definition of friction which is thus. Friction is a force which acts in between the two surfaces of two objects in contact with each other and opposes the motion of one object over the other. So let's move on. Now, I want you to um, imagine you have an object on your table, and um, let's say that object is a bag of rice, and you want to move it over that table, alright? You want to move that bag of rice over that table. Now, what do you do? You start to apply force. Now, when you apply some force at first, it doesn't move, alright? So, what do you do? Your mind tells you, let me apply more force. So, you apply much more force, and you keep increasing the force you're applying until it just begins to move. Alright, so at first it wasn't moving, you applied some force, it wasn't moving. Then increase the force you were applying to push it, and then it began to move. It just began to move. Now what you are doing is that you are increasing the force because you try to overcome a certain type of friction known as static or limiting friction. Alright, so static or limiting friction is that maximum force that must be overcome before a body can just start to move over another body. Alright, is that maximum force that must be what? Overcome before a body can just start to move over another body. So you can see that before a body can just start to move over another body, this force must be overcome. If not, that body would move over the other body. And that's what you are doing, all right? So now, let me explain what um, happened numerically. Let's say, as you can see, this is the maximum force. The maximum force, all right? So let's say this maximum force, this static friction, it's 100 newton, alright? It's 100 newton. And um, let's see at first when you are applying some force, the force you applied, the force you started with was what? 20 newton. Alright, so we can see that 20 newton is too small to even overcome this force, alright? So it doesn't move. You know that this force must be overcome before this body can move, alright? So the force you applied at first was 20 newton. It couldn't overcome it, so the body. It didn't move. So you began to increase the force you were applying and you change it to what? You increase it to, for example, let me say you increase it to 50 newtons. That's still not up to 100 newtons. So you keep increasing the force you were applying until it reached just the same amount, 100, what? 100 newtons. Now at this point, you will notice that the body just begins to move over the other body because what is able to what overcome this it just overcomes this it's just equal to this friction and that is why the body just begins to move all right so that's for static or limiting friction static or limiting friction is that force is that maximum force that must be overcome before a body can just start to move over the other body so that's the first type of friction let's look at the second type of friction the second type of friction is called the dynamic or kinetic friction okay that's the force that must be overcome um, for a body to keep moving in uniform speed over another body. So to keep a body moving in uniform speed over another body, you need to overcome this friction called what? Called kinetic or dynamic friction, alright? So 
you must know that even as a body is in motion over the other body, there's still friction present. And to overcome that friction, all right, you need to apply some force that will overcome this what kinetic or dynamic friction. So kinetic or dynamic friction is the friction or is a force that must be overcome for a body to keep moving in uniform speed over the other body. All right, so now let's look at um, friction in two instances. All right, we are going to look at friction in two instances in this series. And the first instance, the first case is friction in, in an object moving on the horizontal plane. All right, friction in the case of an what? An object moving on a horizontal plane. All right, so we are going to look at the second case in this series. So now we have this diagram. Okay, we have this what diagram. This object, as is shown here, is moving in this direction. All right, this object is what is moving in this direction. And now we can see that friction is going to apply here because the surface of this object is in what is in contact with the surface of this horizontal plane, and it is in motion, as we can see. So we see that the conditions for friction to be present are here. So friction is going to be acting here. All right, since what the two surfaces of what. This one surface of this object is in contact with the other surface of this what horizontal plane and what is in motion. Friction is going to be applying here. Now we can see that this is the direction of motion of what of this object. All right. For this to be the direction of the motion of this object, it means that force is being applied in this direction. All right. When you wanted to move that what back of ice over the table, you apply force in the direction you wanted to move it in. All right. So. We are seeing, seeing here that this is the direction of motion of this object. Force or the horizontal force will be what in this direction. Okay, will be what in this direction. So we can also say that the direction of the force is here. All right, the direction of the force is here. Now we know that friction opposes motion. So friction is going to be in the opposite direction of the motion of this object because what is opposing motion. As it means in the same direction. Is actually supporting the motion, but since it's opposing motion, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So we have here friction. Friction. All right. So now let's look at something called Newton's third law of motion. All right. What is Newton's third law of motion? Newton's third law of motion states that to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. All right. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now. Let me give you an example of um, what this action and reaction um, are. Now, as you mean I use my fist to punch a wall, as you mean I use what? My fist, my fist to punch a wall. I'm going to feel some pain. All right? I'm going to feel some pain. Now, my fist punching the wall is actually what? The action. My fist punching the wall is the action. The pain I'm receiving is because what? The wall punches me back. It's not because I punch the wall. All right? The wall punches me back. The wall sends back force. The same force I sent into it is going to give a reaction, all right, back. And that is what the reaction, all right? So we have the action, my fist punching the wall, and the reaction, the wall sending that force back to my fist. That's the reaction. And that's why you feel pain when you punch the wall, all right? So now, um, you can see that to every action, there's always a reaction. And that reaction is what? Always um, equal and opposite to what? The action. So now let's look at the fact that it's equal. When I um, punch the wall with my fist, when I punch the wall with my fist, if I punch it a little bit, I'm going to feel a little bit pain. But if I punch it so much, I'm going to feel so much pain. That's because what the reaction, the reaction is always equal to the action. And we see that it's also opposite, all right? We see that it's also opposite. If the action is this way, the wall is going to send back force to your fist, which is this way. So they're always opposite in direction. So we have the Newton's third law of motion, which says that action and reaction are equal and opposite, or to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. All right? So how does this apply here? How does this apply here? Now, we see that this object is sending an action on this horizontal plane. Is exerting an action on this what horizontal plane, and that action is what we know as weight. It's what we know as what as weight, and as we know, weight is equal to mass multiplied by the gravitational constant. All right, gravitational constant, the acceleration due to gravity. 
All right, so V is equal to what mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And now, as we've said, to every action, there's always a reaction. So there's going to be a reaction here, according to Newton's type of motion. And now, as we know, according to the law, that reaction is always equal and opposite to the action. Reaction. It's always what equal, this reaction is equal to this action and what is in an opposite direction. As you can see, this is the direction of the action is pointing downwards and the reaction is just in opposite direction. All right. So we can see that reaction is equal and opposite to this action. So we have this diagram written, um, we have this diagram drawn out here and I've labeled them and these are the things you need to have in mind and when you're solving questions on friction. All right. So we are going to look at the last part. Which, which is coefficient of static friction, okay? Coefficient of static friction. I want you to take note of these two things. Um, rather, I meant to say friction, rather, right? The friction and the reaction, okay? The friction is directly proportional. This is the symbol for proportional. It's directly proportional to the reaction. Notes. The friction is directly proportional to the reaction. The bigger the reaction, the bigger the friction. The lesser the reaction, the lesser the friction. All right? So now, um, when I want to change this um, proportional sign to equals to sign, I'm going to add a constant. All right? And that constant is this one. Coefficient of static friction. Right? So we've seen that... Um, Friction is directly proportional to what reaction, and we've just gotten this equation from it. That friction is equal to what, and this coefficient of static friction multiplied by the what reaction. All right, so we are going to write this equation here because we are going to use it always in our in solving questions on friction. And now, making this subject of formula, the coefficient of static friction, we have um, it's coefficient of static friction is equal to what friction over reaction, right? You need to take note of this, alright? So I hope you learned a lot. Um, please don't forget to um, continue watching um, watch the next video which is um, which explains friction in the case of an object moving on an inclined plane. That's very important, alright? So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like this video and also comment. Thank you, God bless. See you in my next video.